at the base. So base times height divided by two is 22.5 inches squared. The area of this rectangle is one inch tall and one and a half inches wide. So base times height is 1.5 inches squared. However, it's a negative because I've cut it out of the triangle. So I'm actually going to cut it out so it's going to be negative. The next thing you want to do is you want to find the centroid of each of the basic shapes. Not the whole shape, that's what we're going to calculate, each of the basic shapes. But remember, you always have to measure from the bottom left-hand corner so that you have positive numbers for the x and y. So I'll do the, rec I'll do the triangle first. For a triangle, you take, for a right triangle, you take it from the 90 degrees and it's the height over three and the base over three. So the height over three, so six divided by three is two inches. So about two inches up, which is about right here, is gonna be the Y. And the X is gonna be seven and a half divided by three, which is two and a half, which is about right here. So there is my centroids. 2.5 comma two is the centroid of the triangle. Not the whole thing, just the triangle, as if this wasn't cut out. The centroid of this guy right here, this negative one and a half inch square rectangle, it's one and a half wide, which divided by two is 0.75. Is it 0.75? From here to here is 0.75, but I need to measure from here. So what's the actual centroid? 2.75. 2.75. I'm gonna write it out here so I can actually have space. 2.75. And the y is just gonna be from here to here, it's one inch, so half of that is 0.5. So there is my centroid for each one. The next step is to find the x and y of the whole thing. So I now have the area of the triangle and its centroid. I have the area of the rectangle and its centroid. If I wanna find the x of the whole thing, the equation is the sum of the areas times its x's divided by the sum of the areas. So in this case, I have a 22.5 area times its x, which is 2.5. And I'm gonna add that to the negative 1.5 area times its x, which was 2.75. Divide the whole thing by the areas added up, 22.5 plus negative 1.5, and I get an x of Plus negative 1.5 times 2.75 divided by 21. 2.48. I heard a yes, so I know that means you got it right. How long ago did we do The y is the same thing about three. The y is the same thing, except instead of the x's, I now do the y's. So now I, I still have the same area, it's 22.5, but this time I multiply it times the y, which is two. Negative 1.5 stays the same, but I'm gonna do the y, which is 0.5. Divide the whole thing by the sum of the areas, which is 22.5 plus negative 1.5, and I get a y of 0.5. Two point one. There you go. Any questions about that? That is the centroid, irregular shape. Now let's do the truss. With the truss, we've done these more recent. I hope you guys were able to do this. I went ahead and just randomly laid this points A, B, and C. And the first thing I need to do is find the reaction forces. So I'm gonna do, using moments, I always do my first step. So moments are equal to force times distance. So I'm gonna do clockwise, counterclockwise. And I have 350 going down. I'm going to assume that I'm pivoting around A, so if I have 350 going down, that's gonna make it go counterclockwise. So I have 350 times, I'm 12 feet away going counterclockwise, and the only thing I have going against it is that force right there. So the reaction force at B in the X direction times two feet, because it's two feet away. There's nothing else, so two RBX 
equals 4,200. Divide both sides by two, and I get RBX equal to 2,100. And I update as I go, 2,100. If I have 2100 going left, that means at A, I have to have 2100 going to the right. If I have 350 go going down here, on the overall trust, that means I have to have 350 going up. I didn't do the up, down, left, right, but hopefully you can see that pretty easily. Okay, so I now have three of my answers, which would be the three reaction forces. The next step is, um, I pick a joint, and I'm going to pick joint B because it's the easiest one. I can see it only has two unknowns, and one of them will be very easy to calculate. So I'm going to pick joint B next. I'm going to draw the joint, so I have 2100 coming in from the right to the left. I'm going to assume that this member is in tension, so, and I'm going to assume this member is in tension. Very good, and so if I do up, down, I have AC going up, I have nothing going down, so AC equals zero. So that is equal to zero. Oh, did I say AC? I didn't say AB equals zero. Now I'm gonna do left, right, and now I'm gonna do, I did this wrong too, didn't I? That's AB. Thanks, whoever thought that, good job. This is BC. Thank you. So I'm going to do BC. That means I have 2100 going to the left. I have BC going to the left. I have nothing going to the right. So it's going to be 2100 plus BC equals zero. That means BC is going to end up being a negative number, negative 2100. So I'm going to flip my arrow around to make it positive. I'm going to go ahead and write this number. Is it a compression or tension? Compression. A negative means it's in compression. All right, I only have one more unknown. It's this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and do joint C to find that unknown. Joint C looks like this. It's going to be having, because it's in compression, my arrow is going to go towards the joint, so it's 2100 coming from BC. 350 going down, which is that arrow right there. And then the only one I don't know is AC, which goes off at some unknown angle as well. So that kind of stinks. So at this point, I have to hit the brakes, and I have to figure out what this angle is. So I'm going to do a little angle calculation. And if I remember the equation for angle is it's the inverse tangent of the y over the x. Assuming I'm measuring from the horizon, which I am. So that means it's the inverse tangent of the y, which is 2 feet, over the x, which is 12 feet, 2 over 12, and I get 9.5 degrees. I've, only, I've done this a couple times. Otherwise, I would have had to put that in the calculator because I don't know what the inverse tangent of 1 6 is. I need to do this because it's at an angle, so I have AC Y component, AC X component, and I now know this is 9.5 degrees. Time to do my up, down, left. What do I want to do first? Up, down, or left, right? I'm going to do left, right. Doesn't matter, both of them will give me the same thing. I have 2100 going to the left, I have AC X going to the right, which is equal to AC cosine of the angle. There's nothing else going left or right, so 2100 equals AC cosine of 9.5. Divide both sides by cosine of 9.5, I get AC equal to 2130. It's positive, so what is it going to be? Tension. 2130 in tension. Why is 2100 and 2130, why are those numbers so close to each other? Because the angle was small. Very good. If you have a small angle, those numbers are going to be very similar. There are two ways I can check my work at this point. I'm going to do one of them. One of them is I'm going to go ahead and do the up down just to make sure my numbers are all correct. I have ACY going up, which 
which equals to AC sine of theta, which is the angle, and I have 350 going down. So if AC sine of theta, which is, I know AC, so 2130 times the sine of 9.5 equals 350, I'm good to go. If you type it in, you get about 351 because of rounding errors, boom. What is the other way I could check my numbers if I had time? What is the other way I could check my numbers? Solve joint A. Solve joint A. Very good, Tristan. All right, guys, that is it.